Ooh, oh boy, that was exactly what we wanted. Greetings, everyone. I'm glad to be here, and I'm glad that you are here. Today's jank is in Brawl, because it's Brawl Wednesday. And um, we're playing with Luris. This card is just an obtusely powerful magic card. When it was first printed, there was a lot of talk about how, as far as raw power level, this very well may be the most powerful card ever printed. Now, since then, there were some companion changes and things like that. And it's, you know, uh, it is still a very strong card, but it is definitely, it, it is no, no longer in that discussion, right? Now, admittedly, whether or not that was ever actually justified or maybe a little bit stirred in with hyperbole there is up for debate. But make no mistake, holy crud, Luris was insane pre-nerf. Um, so now that it's been nerfed in 60 card, I'm going to start trying to play it out of the command zone. See how we feel about that. Um, now, it is notably not our companion. We do have permanents that are CMC 3 or greater. It is our commander. So uh, we're looking forward to being able to cast it in that manner. But what are we trying to do here? Well, we're trying to exploit the metagame. And... Uh, Metagames are often a little bit misunderstood, and it's what you're expecting to play against at any given time. Metagames from tournament to tournament can be vastly, but will almost always be at least somewhat different. So if you're expecting to see a lot of mono red, something with just some casual life gain can be good. But let's say the mono red is maybe more mid-rangey, so there's lots of creatures, uh, lots of creatures, um, and some more like four and five drops even sometimes in the mono red build. Well, suddenly just gaining three or four life just doesn't do much anymore. You've really got to be able to interact with the creatures. So removal gets better, uh, as does blocking and having bigger creatures, going more mid-rangey and things like that. So it really depends on what you expect to see. Well, in Brawl, you expect to see things going much slower, very, very slow and gradual pace decks with the exception of very few, like Torbron, as a mono red commander can be very aggressive that way and there's uh, like a rata build there's some gruel stuff that's aggressive but for the most part everybody else is really stinking slow so being able to be somewhat aggressive while grinding in the late game with casting things back from our graveyard pretty regularly i think it'll be pretty good but uh let's go and find out shall we all right folks here we are on the play and this hand is something i guess we're gonna hang on to it um it's got some interaction it's got some protection it's got some recursion it's got our drain which is pretty good here in this deck i think so you know we'll see the deal is i do oh boy that was exactly what we wanted i was gonna say i do think we want to try and get down and go and relatively early the opponent's like actually you know what i don't want to face a turn two skyclave shade and scoops them up i would not say that that was the most engaging match of match the gathering we've ever played but darn it we got the win so all right gg opponent gg i guess good game troy good game all right folks here we are up against the tech good luck the tech and yeah i mean okay we can keep this. We have both Selfless Savior and All Seed of Life's Bounty. Both of these cards are very, very strong magic cards. So we're going to go ahead and start on uh, All Seed of Life's Bounty, I guess. Probably go to Temple of Silence next. Indeed. And scry a Plains away. We're going to go ahead and get in for one. Cast a Selfless Savior. Pass the turn. It is your go, opponent. It is your go. And go with Forest and Elysian Caryatid. That is a fine thing to do as far as I'm concerned. Let's go ahead and get in for two. The opponent wants to trade. We are not just okay with that. We are thrilled about that. The opponent elects not to do any such thing. Mm 
Yeah, let's... Just add Larissa to hand, I guess. Er, oh, wow, yeah. <laughs> That's funny, folks. That is funny. I am so used to Luris being a companion that uh, I forgot we were uh, we were brawling and we just get to cast it. Oh boy, that uh, harkens back to the broken days, doesn't it? Um. All right, so let's actually just add another black mana here. I think we're gonna draw a card, lose a life, down to thirty, and yeah, just pass for now. We're gonna leave up all seed of life's bounty. All right, Ashaya, Soul of the Wild, making an appearance. Ooh, okay. Let's uh, give Luris protection from green. And get in. Yep. All Seed of Life's Bounty make an appearance. We will make a land drop and cast a Mire Triton. We're, of course, going to leave up our All Seed of Life's Bounty again. Because that... Uh, we can make our Mire Triton protection from green and kill whatever attacker gets in at us, all while it's having it survive to fight another day, as they say. Folks, I'm not going to lie, things are looking pretty good for us, but it is definitely not sealed up. Our opponent could... Uh... Oh boy, that's a good one. Our opponent can very easily come back from the situation, depending on... A whole bunch of factors. Yeah, let's go ahead and just give it protection from uh, green again. And yeah, the opponent's just like, yeah, we're done here. Um, it, we can't recast the All Seed of Life's Bounty this turn, because we cast... Or we Okay, so folks, you may have missed what happened there. We cast the Mire Triton which it mills two cards over, we gain two life. In that mill, we dropped E to Extinction to our bin and this, all the glitters into our bin. So then on this turn, you only get to cast one spell from your graveyard per turn, two CMC or, uh, or less. So we cast the all the glitters out of the bin. We then put the all seed of life's bounty in the bin, which is a little risky, honestly. Our opponent could have something that exiles the graveyard or something, but I think we're okay considering we have selfless savior as well for protection. And we're just gonna keep getting aggressive here, giving it protection from green. We get in for four more lifelink, meaning we go up to 39. Um, and then next turn, we can cast all seed of life's bounty back out onto the graveyard or out of the graveyard and just keep doing this stuff. Uh, yeah, our, our opponent, in a bit of a spot, especially considering we have Death Touch and Indestructible still. I don't blame them for scooping it. They, they were in a spot. So either way, good game, the tech, good game. All right, folks, here we are up against Spurts. Good luck, Spurts. And I think this hand is good, actually. I, you know, I'm not saying we're favored or anything. I, I think Rada is very, very strong. Uh, depending on how you build it, there is a lands matter way of building it, and there's also just generically gruel aggressive stuff, right? And I think that either one can be very, very good. Uh, we're going to put the counter on Luminarch Aspirant. Uh, maybe that was wrong. Maybe we are supposed to go on... I think we were supposed to go on Caller Familiar here. Yeah, our opponent just gets a free chump. The other way, they would have lost two more life. I was thinking putting the counter on there because we do want to get it out of Bone Crusher range as soon as possible. And Shock and, you know, other two damage removal spells, right? But uh, if they've got it, they've got it here, you know? So, oh boy, Azusa Lost but Seeking. This does appear to be the Lands Matter variety, which I would not describe as great for us. So let's go ahead and get rid of Azusa. That card is absolutely terrifying. And I think we're going to get down All Seed of Life's Bounty as well. Progress to combat. Put the counter on Luminarch Aspirant. There aren't a ton of 3 damage reach and removal spells in the format. So Luminarch Aspirant, safer sort of thing, you know. And Spurts is like, actually, 
uh, I, I'm sure what happened here, folks, is they didn't have any more lands in hand. Otherwise, they would have put an additional land in with Azusa last turn, right? So Rada allows you to put land cards from the top of your library onto the battlefield. Uh, so they didn't have any lands in hand. This is turn three. They look at the top of their library, and there was still not on their land. So they're like, okay, they knew they're going to miss at least one more land drop. With Lumar Casper just continuing to grow with the support we already have, they know Loris is coming. Um, they're just like, yeah, this is absolutely not worth it, and they scoop him up. I don't blame you, Spurts. Good game. All right, folks, we're up against Nissa the Shadow Bows, and I think this hand is capable. I would not say that this is the best hand we've drawn up today, but we have uh, white, we have black, we have, you know, cards that we can cast that, you know, what more do you want? You know what I mean? Uh, and so, turn two, Ephemia. Turn three, likely Archfiend's Vessel, Sentinel's Eyes, I think. Uh, though it may be Meyer's Grasp, we'll find out. It depends. If our opponent casts, yeah, I was going to say some kind of mana tapping creature or something, we will definitely be grasping it. And they do, so we do. We will not be eating that with, uh, with our Aphemia. We will definitely want to recast that with Luris. So, you know, decline. Hey, that's a good one. All right, well, Luris, going to make an appearance. And Sentinel's Eyes coming down on, I guess, just on Ephemia. Uh, part of me wanted to go onto the Archfiend's Vessel because we want to diversify our threats. Our opponent appears to have removal of some variety. But... At the end of the day, the uh, Vigilance on the Flying is very, very powerful indeed. So I would much rather have that than have the... Oh, boy. Come on. On the odds. Admittedly, we still get our Luris back and the Ephemia. Uh, very, very strong there. So it's all right, but... Darn it, that exiling feels really bad. Still, glad it happened now instead of later, for sure. We are, have the opportunity to get down a Felidar retreat. No! Oh. Oh, my goodness. Scavenging Ooze is just the worst for us. Birth of Melodus. I'm going to crack Fable Passage, yep. Gets a forest. Going to eat our Myers Grass, presumably. Yep. It resolves. I think we are just going to go ahead and get a swamp, though. Oh, never mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that's not possible. So, don't mind me. Kitten. Folks, for those of you who are curious, uh, our opponent was the one cracking Fabled Passages. We were casting Birth of Melodices. That's what you get when you're distracted thinking about something else, darn it. You get to make yourself look like an idiot. But... Folks, if there's one thing I'm truly excellent at, it's making myself look like an idiot. So, I will accept it and move on. Oh, boy. Opponent thinking things over. Still has four mana available. The life total really dwindling here, though. Uh, Difleter's Mouse is on 13. Okay, they go for Nissa the Shadow Bows. Currently, there really isn't anything good in the graveyard to reanimate, so just going to make a 3 3 Haste Menace out of a land. No, just going to untap a forest as it happens. 
Scavenging is very likely not going to get in here, I assume. All right. So let's go ahead and get counters and vigilance. And go ahead and get in with the team at Difleter Schmaus's face. We are withholding Demonic Embrace because it doesn't actually change the clock here. But now either one of these threats is lethal, the 3-3 or the 4-3. And uh, our opponent may not realize that they need two removal spells and might tap out trying to do other things, you know. Okay. Opponent is definitely tapping lots and lots of lands. It's the Great Henge. Okay, well, they're not both lethal anymore. But we do still have lethal if our opponent doesn't have a removal spell. Okay, it's Lotus Cobra. Come on down. I'm going to draw a card. Land drop. It's black mana, and they're going to add green mana, three mana available. Going to eat their own creature up to nine. Let's see, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, I think we are going to go ahead and sacrifice our wall just to make sure, because our opponent is holding up a suspicious amount of mana. And so we're definitely going to want our Felidar Retreats to uh, go off this turn. All right, we gain a couple of life points. Well, let's Palm Iron Knight. Demonic Embrace. And then a land. Our opponent now has to choose between Ephemia and the 3-3, right? If they do have the single removal spell, we're kind of expecting. Um, Ephemia, of course, the better creature in general. Okay, yeah. Uh, the better creature in general, but um, the kitten just not... Uh, you know, it, it's going to get messy here for sure, for our opponent, because we just get to go up with uh, the Felidar Retreat, and yeah, everything very, very challenging. Our opponent may not even have had a removal spell at all. Uh, they were hoping to maybe intimidate us, or just trade, or even chump on the ground by another turn with just Ephemia getting in. If it's just Ephemia, they get to gain two more life with Great Henge. The fact that we have lethal here, just, you know, yeah, it, it could have been no removal spell at all. But either way, Good game, Deck Leader Schmaus. Good game. All right, folks, we are back, and I had a blast. I had a blast. The deck was actually really good. Um, had a couple of wins, had more loss, or had more wins than losses for sure. I, I don't actually remember our exact record, but darn it, we did pretty good. Um, and I'm not exactly sure where we might change. Um, I do think some of our key cards are very, very important. Like the Woe Strider, the Skyclave Apparition um, on the top end, and, and Demonic Embrace on the top end, uh, as well as Felidar Retreat for if the games go a little longer. But pretty much all the rest of that is pretty interchangeable, depending on how you want to build your deck. But then in the earlier game, I think Seasoned Hollow Blade would be very, very important to the strategy, though admittedly, we didn't even see it. We played whatever, five or six, six games, I think, maybe seven games. I think, I think we played six, one, four, lost two, if my memory serves. But either way, this card very, very strong with Luris. You discard a card, tap Seasoned Hollow Blade, it gains indestructible. Well, normally the, the discarding a card's like, ooh, that stinks really bad, right? Well, no, what the heck, man? 
we'll just cast it with Luris after you discarded it, right? So it's not even that big of a dis or, uh, disadvantage. Being able to have a gain indestructible and stay on the board, very strong, especially through board wipes, which would normally be relatively good against the stack. Um, don't get me started about if you have the Luminarch Aspirant, being able to put counters on it. Oh, my heart, right? Um, but the Ephemia didn't actually exile any enchantments whatsoever from the bin. Uh, we saw it a number of different times in the deck games. Admittedly, it was pretty good, just as a 2-mana 2 on fly. So, I don't know if we want to cut it or not, but it is in the discussion for cuts if you wanted to make some of those changes. Kite Sail Freebooter, I wanted to see in play, didn't ever see it a single time. Null Priest of Oblivion, I think, is very strong. Uh, we didn't see it either. Uh, one of those problems with um, Singleton decks, right? But obviously, the All Seed of Life's Bounty, the Selfless Savior, Sentinel's Eyes, those these sorts of cards, very, very strong in this build, and I would not change any of those either. Um, there's definitely plenty of room to play, though, so let me know down in the comments below how you feel about the deck, and maybe what cards you might like to see in it. Now, here, come on, help me, right? If you think you want to add cards, then tell me what cards you might want to pull out in favor of those cards as well, because darn it, um, every one of us can come up with cards that would be good in this deck. You know, anything CMC as a permanent, two CMC or less. It doesn't even matter. A two one with no abilities. Well, you can cast it with Loris. Yeah. Okay. But what do you cut? Sometimes that's just so much harder. So definitely let me know how you feel about that and where we might go to make that better. I actually have a Twitch stream, darn it. And I'm going to play this game or this deck quite a bit on stream tonight and I'd really rather win than lose so if there's a couple of improvements that can be easily made please help me make them down in the comments below let me know some cards you might change um I can't promise I'm gonna make every change darn it like uh I'm going to use my best judgment uh but I do read every single comment and I do take every single comment and give it some genuine honest to goodness thought so please darn it just let me know and uh we can have that discussion when that stuff happens uh, probably even on stream as well. So either way, uh, if you wouldn't mind going ahead and dropping a little bit of like and, you know, stuff, you know, subscribe if you're not a subscriber and things, that does really help the channel. It lets YouTube know, hey, this this dude's content is valuable. So, you know, and that, it would mean the world to me if you did. So that said, you folks have a wonderful day and I'll catch you next time.